kick for Kate Simpson, who takes it on the outer side wing. Hand all the way to Chris Yaron. Time to go. Time to burn them all. Time to blow them all away. He steps inside the 50. He steadies a 45. And that is a cracking goal. Stand back and marvel, Chris Yaron. He's in my all Australian team. Rowan Connolly, first of all, from the age. Welcome, Hi, Marco. Mate. How are you? Hi, boys. Uh, we're going to get to the lads in just a tick. Uh, yep. What do you make? Just before we do get to uh, yes. Chris and Tom, what, what do you make of the uh, of the weekend? What did you learn? Uh, I learned that Frio is pretty close to being a, a genuine flag chance. I think um, you know it's been the issue has been scoring power for them, and Pavlich stands up, and I think that makes a difference. It's interesting that mm. they're. Um, they're pretty highly ranked for scoring efficiency. Uh, inside 50s, they do okay on the differentials. Walters coming back made a huge difference. He only kicked a goal, but I think mm. he was involved in about seven goals. Um, Pav stands up and kicks five, and all of a sudden, they've got the firepower to win a grand final. Well, thanks to Hyundai. Uh, let's welcome from the Blues, Chris Yaron and Tom Bell. Boys, thanks for making the trip down. We really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Hey, before we get into the important stuff, uh, Tommy... Um, Mick Malthouse. I've been watching some of the interviews he's been doing before games, Rowan, and after games. He's been someone's been slipping him to happy pills. He's in a much better mood at the moment. Uncle Mick. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's he seems to be a lot nicer to you guys at the end of the season. <laughs> um, no, it's it's good good for him. Well, he's, uh, a few wins will make a bit of a difference, won't they? I mean, do you find uh, does his mood alter that much from uh, but you know, like after a win to after a loss? Yeah, I think. Um, Obviously, you don't want to get on the bad side of him when we uh, have a loss. But, um, yeah, no, he's, he's pretty easy going around the club generally. So I think um, when we get a win, it's pretty good. Actually, Chris, I'm just remembering, I, I had one sort of minor altercation with him uh, last year. I wouldn't year. call it minor. It was pretty minor. He slapped you around. Oh, he slapped me around. Well, it was in response to a question about Chris, because when you got dropped for the body language issues, oh, yeah, last year. I guess that's a bit of a flashpoint for you. Is your relationship with him really... Uh, grown as a result of that, do you think? Yeah, we sort of sat down in the last season, and um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't playing in a position that I didn't like last year, and um, we spoke about that towards the end of last season, and you know, I wanted to play on the half back flank, and he said he was all for it, and um, lucky enough, I did that throughout this year, and um, you know, submitted my spot in the team, and um, hopefully, uh, I can finish off the season very strongly. How often does that happen, Chris? Because we have a lot of players that are recruited to clubs and they may have played a position all their life and they're asked to do a role or a job that they're not familiar with. Does it happen regularly that players are being played out of their favourite position and they've got to make a sacrifice for the side? I think it was just beneficial for the team that I you know, I started as a forward, a forward-line player, but obviously with the likes of Eddie Betts and Jeff Garlett down there as well last year, I, I sort of struggled a little bit to find some consistency um, through my footy and um, it really um, you know, found me out last year and um, I sort of said to him that I didn't want to play in that position so you know, he was all for it but I think it was just more team balance that I had to stay up there and you know, put on yeah. pressure and, and tackles so um, yeah, lucky enough I, I got the swap and I'm now down back And, and what about Mick because uh, he, he brings a whole different look to the club, he brings a whole different feel and obviously a different philosophy to Tom is since he's arrived at the footy club, a fair bit's changed. You've got a new fitness bike there. It's it's it, it would be a different place, I'd imagine, from two years ago to now. Yeah, definitely. I think um, what Mick's brought to the club is very good. I think we are we are going in the right place, in the right way. Sorry, and um, obviously that's come to show this year. We've had a few very close games where we have stuck it to the good side. So I think um, yeah, there's plenty more of it to come. I'd like to ask both of you what, you know, obviously the last seven or eight weeks now have been fairly consistent. You know, one quarter against Sydney, but apart from that, it's been very steady. What do you think's been the biggest difference in how you've played between the first half of the season and the second half? Yeah, I think we've just got more contributors each week. Um, yeah, certainly at the start of the season, we've we've had, you know, 10 blokes on board that was contributing each week. But I think now we've got starting to get, you know, 18 to 20 blokes um, playing good footy. Um, each week, which is you know what you need because you can't be carrying too many passengers um, throughout each week in this in this competition. So we're starting to get everyone on board now, and it's good to see. But um, you know those close games are are slipping away from us um, at times. But you know if we get ourselves in those situations again, I think we'll uh, you know we'll learn from those mistakes um, that we we did in, against Geelong and, and Fremantle, and, and hopefully get the cookies next time. Talking of contributors, Jeff Gartlett, uh, he's out at the moment. He played uh, for the uh, for the reserve side on the weekend. Um, 
you've been through the situation where you've had to go back and, and work on things. Have you had a word to him? Has, has, he, has he needed to have a chat to you about it? Uh, well, I sort of, I'm obviously good mates with Jeffy, yep. but um, I think it falls back to his own court. Um, he just needs to, you know, get his his off-field dramas right and um, his on-field um, performance back up to scratch because he, we all know that he certainly can play, but it's just up to his mindset whether he can get back to AFL level. But, um, you know, he's had a good couple of games in the VFL the last couple of weeks, so... I'm confident that if he gets his body and, and everything right, he, uh, he'll be back to his flying best. And Mick believes in him? Because he, 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 he's in the best 22, isn't he? When Jeff's fly, flying, he's definitely in your best 22. Yeah, he's certainly a, a one in, in be, our best 22, but he's just got to you know, get all the things that we, we need to um, you know to perform at this level um, week in, week out. And unfortunately, he hasn't been doing that. But, um, you know, like... Um, yeah, we're just confident that we can get yep. back to his best. Well, if we're going to talk about Garlot, I guess we have to talk about Mitch Robinson. Yep. Um, you guys, you know, the whole playing group would have been disappointed with what happened. Where's he at, do you think? Can he can he come back and still be a valuable part of this playing group, or is the the trust been breached too far? Yeah, I think I think Robbo's still got plenty to give. I mean, you can see Robbo's Robbo shows glimpses when he plays, and he's a very good player. So. Um, Good thing about Robbo's incident, he's got still got two weeks to show the team that um, he still deserves a spot in that side, and I think he's putting his right foot forward now. Did the leaders of the club, and we're talking about Bryce and we're talking about Mark Murphy, did they uh, did they talk to the group about about this, or is it kept amongst the coaches, or is it a bit of both? Um, no, it was pretty open about it all. Like yep. um, after the incident, obviously, um, the leaders came to the playing group and discussed what went on, and yeah, I think. Um, yeah, obviously, as I said before, Robert's just got to put his front foot forward and go from there. What about overall? I reckon it's a bit ironic that you guys, you won't play finals, you'll finish with fewer wins, you'll finish lower on the ladder last year, and yet I reckon there's an argument you've actually had a better year because you look at some of the pluses out of it. Sam Rose stood up. Uh, you know, Chris, you've really sort of ingrained yourself there on the halfback line. Tom, you've started to play some good footy. Menzel's bobbed up. Uh, Daisy Thomas has really come good in the last few weeks. I reckon there's far more sort of individually far more pluses out of this year than last year. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. I, th- I think it's good, like, as we're starting to see a few of the younger players bob up and play some pretty consistent footy. Like, we've got big Nicky Graham in there who's, I think, played his sixth game. And I think last week he had a, he had a ripper game. So, yeah. um, no, that's good. And Rowie's Rowie's really taken to the back line. I mean, he's a bit of a stalwart down there taking the gun forward. So, I think... For leading into next year, it's put us in really good stead. A couple of injury concerns with uh, Dale Thomas and Troy Menzel, uh, both now being cleared, I think, today. Uh, have you been able to catch up with those two in the last 48 hours? How are they tracking? Yeah, well, I saw Daisy today and he looked pretty good. Yep. So I think they'll just take it day by day. Um, and hopefully touch what he gets up this week. Um, Menz, I didn't see Menz at all. Yeah, I saw, I saw Menz today. He, um, similar to Daisy, I mean, I think, I think he'll be a test this weekend, but he'll obviously great to have men's in the side he's very vibrant provides heaps now this weekend's a really interesting game isn't obviously port have probably got a bit more to play for in terms of the eight but that was a game you know round one you guys almost had them on toast and they came flying home is that sort of stuck in your mind in terms of what might happen this time the the fact that you you've already shown once when they're up and about you can match them yeah we certainly show that in round one this year that um, unfortunately they blew us away in that last quarter but um, we certainly know that our game plan is as good as and it can hold up against anyone. We certainly show that against Fremantle and, and Geelong and even North, beating North Melbourne a couple of weeks ago. So um, our best is good enough, but we just got to, um, you know, have these little brain phases, you know, slack them out um, throughout our game. And I think we'll we'll get go a long way from to winning this week and hopefully, you know, spoil Port's um, chances of making the top four would be great. It would be good. Uh, Chris, I watch you play football and uh, you have one of the greatest gifts of all, which is speed, uh, being able to turn it on and off as you like. I reckon at times you see players behind you and you let them get up close to you, and then you just go bang. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off. Do you, you've got gears, and, and, I, and I know this is a hard question to ask, and it's probably, you know, it's probably embarrassing for you. But do you realise how that you can turn it on and off as as you do because you do make players look stupid at times. <laughs> I try not to. That's not my intention to go out there and make players look stupid. But um, obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm blessed with a bit of speed. But um, I just got to use that each week and, and use that to my advantage. But um, fortunately, enough, I did it uh, on the weekend and, and got me a goal. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty blessed. How many guys in the AFL do you reckon would be quicker than you? 
off the top of your head? Well, I went in the grand final sprint last year and I came about fifth. So, so who beat certain, you at home? Uh, Paddy Dandefield was lightning. Yeah. Uh, Gary Rowan from the Swans. Yeah, yeah they're quick. Um, but I think I, I gave up at halfway. So, uh, Did you watch it? Do oh, I, I knew I wasn't going to win. So, <laughs> um, yeah, there was a few others, but I can't, re- I can't remember who. Have you who got Jeffy beaten? So. I don't think so, no. I think him and Dennis Armfield's got me covered just. Really? Yeah. Really? So, um, Dennis what, Armfield's like. Actually, while we're talking, what is it, What is going on with Dennis Armfield? Like, I was calling him Denise Armfield on Friday night. His hairdo. The, the sumo. <laughs> yeah, a bit going on there with the hair. And, and the porno moustache. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. Tommy's got one. No, well, <laughs> we'll I was going to get to that. We'll that <laughs> it's, um, it, it's, 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 it's a great time for Carlton, I reckon. And, Ron, I think you summed it up. You'd... You don't necessarily have to have more wins at the end of the year to have a, an improved year. More to look forward to. Uh, yeah. More to look forward to. So, boys, uh, good luck for the rest of the season. Only a couple of games left and then have a break, and we look forward to talking to you again in uh, 2015. Thanks, guys.